Welcome back for another episode of Made in Manitoba. Tonight, we're sharing what we think is one of the most unique ways to become a Manitoban we've ever heard. Orit Shimoni is joining us for the first time as we feature music from her album, Winnipeg. Now, how the singer-songwriter became Manitoban is a story full of challenge, uncertainty, and loss. After becoming a true troubadour with no fixed address playing across the country and traveling via public transit, Orit moved to riding the rails as a via rail on-train performer for years. That lifestyle came to a sudden halt in March 2020 when the world shut down and she found herself stranded in Winnipeg with nowhere to go. And that's the start of her Manitoba story, how the album Winnipeg came to be, and why Orit Shimoni is with us tonight on Made in Manitoba. She will tell us more about life on the road, how her experiences in Winnipeg waiting for the world to open again led to the song she wrote, and how after four years she's getting back on board and entertaining travelers on trains once again. This is Made in Manitoba with Orit Shimoni. Our guests, the conversation, and her music begin after this well before we get started thank you for finding time uh to to chat i know you've had a really busy schedule the last few weeks i was catching up on all things you've been up to on your social media platforms and uh to say that you've put a few miles on is yes. So, yes uh we're super happy that you could slide us in for 30 minutes in between things so, it's my pleasure for sure so are you you're in toronto i'm in toronto right, right now yeah. okay yeah. and then are, are you heading out again pretty shortly? Or Yes, there is drama at every turn. I um, am scheduled to perform. I'm the first performer back on Via Rail after a four or five year hiatus of both of, yeah. on both of our ends. Um, super excited about it. I was thrilled beyond thrilled. And then, of course, the wildfires are um, affecting that. So I, there's... Yeah. A sort of an extra level of distress around it and sadness and grief. So it's a, I like a, it's a pretty emotional few days because I'm troubleshooting my own. Like, okay, well, what happens if I get off in a different city because I have plans to be in Vancouver and like, how do I troubleshoot that and how much will it cost me to? But also just like the immensity of loss is, yeah, it's it's what a yeah, time I mean, we're in a time. I noticed I noticed that too on. Like on your on your Facebook page, I was seeing that, and I was, uh, you know, I, I we've all seen the video, we've all seen the photos of of Jasper, and it's it is just it, it's difficult to describe. You yeah. know, like we we've seen these images uh, many times now in the last five six years since yeah. uh, Fort Mac, and it, it's just stunning is a bad word, but it's the word that when I was watching the video for the first time that I could really it is. It. You know, like, gobsmacking like I don't yeah, that's... because it's not obviously a positive but I was trying to tell this to friends it's a feeling I've never had before so I don't even have a word for it because yeah. the only thing I could compare it to is the first time a close friend of mine passed away and I was like oh my god this is what it feels like for someone not to be here anymore and, and oh shit I'm gonna have to sorry I'm gonna have to yeah. get used to this feeling because it's gonna keep happening and it's it's a little bit like that, like, oh, now a place I know is burnt down and doesn't exist, like, but then it makes you reach for ways of looking at it more hopefully, and, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't wish it upon any place, but yeah, it's there is some human yeah. resilience to the story, too. Well, I'm just kind of give you the rundown of what we yes. do. Everything's all recorded. We're not magically on the radio because what ends up happening is we have a producer that pieces together the program itself called Made in Manitoba, which, like he was uh, indicated, is a combination of music from your latest album and then our con- uh, our conversation yeah. as well. And because I believe, at least I couldn't find an occasion where we've had you on our program in the past, uh, we might have some more kind of basic questions sure. this time. Just kind of introduce you sure. to our audience. Yeah. And uh, as we uh, continue to follow your career, I would expect, you know, an additional uh, follow-up interviews will maybe get a little more in-depth. I'm always happy to be on these programs. It's it's always a pleasure to chat about my work with people who want to know about it. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and uh, before we get started, thank you for sharing uh, the pronunciation of your first name. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to double-check on the pronunciation of your last name. Shimoni. 
Shimoni, okay? Yeah. We were taking bets that it was Shimoni, but I wanted to check. <laughs> Who won? <laughs> uh, uh, every, pretty much everyone did. And I suggested, because I also believed it was Shimoni, but I said, you you never know. <laughs> it could be like a, a Shimoni yeah. or, or a Shim, Shimoni, you know, like a different syllable of emphasis. It's also sort of pronounced different in the different languages that it gets spoken in. So, yeah, in English, it's Orit Shimoni. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Well, if you're ready to start, I'll uh, I'll begin throwing some questions at you, and we'll see where things go. Let's do it. All right. Well, because this is the first time that you're going to be appearing on our Made in Manitoba program, I'll read. How about we just talk a little bit about you? Kind of introduce you uh, to our listeners. Tell us a little bit about your background and, of course, uh, your connection to Manitoba. Well, um, I am from lots of different places, so it's always not a you know not an easy question to answer on one foot. But I was born in England, raised in Jerusalem and Calgary, and uh, I lived in Montreal for several years, which is where my recording career began in earnest. I was performing all along, you know, from my high school years. I was playing little cafe gigs and trying to write songs, but. My Montreal years was where it really um, kind of dove into a, a depth that it wasn't at before. Um, I released two albums. I quit my day job, finished grad school, and moved to Berlin. Lived in Berlin, recorded another album there. And then after that, I became completely nomadic. So I gave up having a place to live, became a troubadour of the road, Um, but I didn't drive, so I figured out ways to do it by public transit. Um, The first few years were exclusively Greyhound in Canada and then the trains of Europe, of course, and eventually came across this amazing program with Via Rail uh, where you could perform on board and play your way across the land. So I did that um, about 50 times, believe it or not, and was... 11, you know, I didn't know how many years I would do it, but it just self-perpetuated. It's all self-managed. I don't have a manager or an agent or any of that. I just, you know, word of mouth and, um, you know, a mix of enthusiasm and desperation. Uh, Ten albums out by the time I'd finished ten years on the road. And, um, And then I was on a train to play two concerts in Winnipeg and the entire world shut down. It was the only city in the world, I think, where, no, I shouldn't say that. It was the only city in Canada where I didn't actually know anybody. Um, So I had no intentions of ever being Manitoban. Um, On Via Rail, as a performer, you can stop in two towns if you do cross Canada. And I always had shows in Saskatoon and Edmonton. So I would get out at the Winnipeg station, smoke a cigarette, and get back on the train. I had been at the Winnipeg station for, you know, 50 times and never stepped past the (laughs) the Forks market. And then suddenly I was stranded there. And I had to do some very rapid calculations because they said shelter at home and I didn't have a home. Um, And I thought it's going to make possibly the best story uh, if I just stay and see what happens. And I've become a Manitoban. That's the story. That's, that's and that's and, and to call that a story, Ori, that's an understatement. <laughs> it was dramatic. It was definitely. Yeah, it certainly was. There's a layer of drama to it. That's that's for sure. Yeah. I, I, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the album Winnipeg itself. Obviously, uh, uh, I think a lot of us are going to assume it was inspired by how you landed there and Absolutely. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we'll we'll get into that. But I did want to just skip back for just a moment and, you know, share for our audience, how did you find yourself coming to music in the first place? Was it was it soul driven or was it a case of you had a family member that kind of led you down that path? I think so. What a nice term, soul driven. I don't think I've ever heard or used that. Um, There was no uh, no one in my family was a professional musician or performer that we don't really know why I ended up, you know, a stage monkey. But um certainly there was music in my house growing up my dad mostly my dad uh you know he's he's got a music brain there was classical music and radio and car long car trips and um you know whatever cassettes we had going at the time 
Uh, he taught me how to sing harmonies when I was a little girl and had an, an impeccable ear. So I, I always loved singing. Uh, there was a guitar kicking around in the house and I asked to be shown a few chords. My dad knew three chords. My mom knew three chords, not the same chords. <laughs> so I just, you know, he I, they had a book of uh, folk songs and I was given permission to take the guitar into my room with this book and have my way with it. And, and out I came a, a, a musician. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, in addition to uh, you being a musician, I, I also would suggest based on, on what I've seen of yours online, you could be called a poet, uh, an essayist, uh, a, a ponderer of life, yes. uh, a reflector of life. Do you find there are any dovetails between those different platforms, those different creative outlets with what you're doing from a songwriting or, or a, a songstress perspective? I think th that all of it comes down to um, an attentiveness, like a very heightened attentiveness to things and a, an absolute uh, innate desire to share my observations in whatever form I think will be the most impactful. And sometimes that form is an essay and sometimes that form is a song. Um, but yeah, there's just this, that, um, this intense need for whatever reason, I'm just wired that way to sort of process everything I'm taking in, which is always a lot, and distill it somehow and, and and give it form. So that's true across all of the art forms, yeah. The uh, late uh, distillation, if you will, Orit, is uh, the album Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested to know if going into this project, you had already settled on that title, or was mm -hmm. it a case the project was kind of playing itself out? You're creating the pieces that are going to land on it, and then you're like, okay, maybe this could be called Winnipeg. In So Winnipeg is my 12th album. So I have a lot of experience, you know, compiling my songs and recording them and, and giving them shape in album form and sequencing songs. And so in all my other albums, I had a whole bunch of songs to choose from and curate into whatever album it was going to become. In the case of Winnipeg... Um, when I landed and got stranded, I got taken in by people who were before that strangers to me. And I lived in their basement for a couple of months. I was immensely distraught. And um, I wrote songs in that basement in reaction to my situation and the global situation. And so all of the songs on that album are from that um, sort of these like um, distraught sessions not that they're all just I mean some of them are hopeful songs but it was the, probably the first album I've ever done where it was so focused in in us in a particular time and place that all of the songs were written in that one uh, time and space and then there was a song on it called Winnipeg and it was it just became like this obvious of course it's it's my Winnipeg album and frankly it's a cool title. And even if you're not from Winnipeg, it's, it's, um, I've always <laughs> been somewhat envious of, um, songwriters who had a town name in their songs. Like it always seemed like a cool thing to do, but I never really had, you know, I, I believe that it's good to be aware of these checklists of types of songs, but it's, if you don't, if you can't come to it authentically and organically, then it's, it's, um, not art, <laughs> you know? So, I was like, well, I'm, here's my town song. It's, uh, nobody in Winnipeg likes cheering for it because I'm saying how awful it is to be stuck there. But, um, I finally had my town name and Winnipeg's got a, it's, I like, yeah, I was like, oh, the, I can check that off my songwriter list at least. <laughs> yeah. It's a bonus, bonus to being stranded. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the, uh, the story that's being told in the song Winnipeg. Um, without, you know, getting into personal details, there was, first of all, um, you know, I'd been on the train several, several times, probably, well, at least 50 times that we know of across Canada. And in that performance mode, you have to sing, you know, contractually, you have to sing some train songs and some Canadiana. And so I became very aware for many years that there was a genre called 
train songs. And I have a fascination with it because there are so many of them and so many different ones. And of course, uh, people would often ask me, do you have an album of train songs? Do you have a lot of train songs? And I didn't really. I had a couple when they organically like, you know, like the checklist. I, you know, if it, if I came to it organically and I in the middle of the night, because I wasn't sleeping at all, probably, well, that whole year, probably, I wasn't sleeping at night because I was distressed. And I went outside to the deck, and I was smoking in those days. So I smoked a cigarette, and I heard the freight train go by. I heard the freight train whistle, and it just went right through me. I was, it, 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 the sound of that whistle gave me such a pang of longing and grief that it's like, I should be on that train. And I remember I had Twitter in those days. I remember tweeting, oh, my God, I am the train song. Um, and those who understood what I meant understood what I meant. And suddenly it occurred to me that uh, many, if not most, train songs are, in fact, about not being able to get on the train. Many of them are from uh, their prison songs often, you know, like I hear the whistle go by, I can't get on the train. And it really hit me that like I'm living this situation and it's uh, it's like within an idiom of songwriting. And so I sat down and wrote, you know, uh, and not knowing like how, how long is this going to be and which way am I going? Is this one of the um, most torturous things about that the lockdowns was for me because it took away my entire way of living overnight. I had no idea if it was ever going to come back. So I didn't know if I was grieving and had to sort of regroup and figure out a new way to live or if I was waiting for it to come back. And that's, you know, there's a line in there about like when, when it get when I can get back on the train, which ways forward and which ways back. Like it was, it was a, a total loss in my case. Um, there's, you know, reference to see my baby again, but I mean, that's, there's also a lot of metaphor in that of like just my way of living and returning to my love of the way I live. Obviously with uh, how much you performed uh, on the trains, uh, you know, riding the rails, if you will, for, for years over the course of your musical career, how would you say that experience has formed your your creativity, your songwriting? How has it influenced the artist that you have become, that you are, but ultimately how that's going to continue to influence you moving forward? Yeah, that's a beautiful question. And it's hard to really answer because um, I know that in the beginning when I lost my way of living, I I lost my identity for a while I, I, because I was a musician of the road. I wasn't, you know, I had no other identity. And so um, it, at least when I wrote fevered songs in a, you know, distraught basement, I, I could see that I was still a writer. And then I started doing live streams and I could see that I was still a performer um, on, on whatever level it was available. Um, and then certain opportunities came in or I made new fans somehow by miracle on social media. And I was like, okay, my music is still alive. Uh, even if I can't move my body through space and time with it in the same way. Um, I only returned to um, performing last year. I waited an extra year because I still thought the situation was very unsafe. Frankly, it still is very unsafe, but there was only, you know, so long I could keep myself out of the, the, the existence that's like, well, how else? I don't have any other thing to give the world. So I'm, I have to take these risks that I'd rather not take, but I'd also rather live than um, stay isolated any longer. But when I went back to, performing the first two tours I did were not as Orit Shimoni I went on tour with a friend and colleague uh, in the states and I was the uh, wild frenzied accordion player and backup singer and I it brought me this the memory of how much I love traveling and how much I love performing 
um, and being on stage and meeting people and seeing different places and, you know, stopping in gas stations and buying whatever stupid thing there is to buy it. Like all the little, you know, joys of travel. And that kicked me in the butt and said, you need to go, if you're going to do this, then you need to take your own songs back out there. And that's what drove me to book another tour in Europe. And I don't know if I'm even answering your question very directly, but that the meeting people um, and the seeing different faces and seeing different places and the very physicality of being in motion for me, like literally in a moving whatever type of vehicle it is, or walking in a different city every few days, it fuels me like nothing else does. Um, and it makes me want to be a musician. Whereas the, the, I, I can't, you know, cut that aspect out of me, but when it was in isolation and in a rented apartment in Winnipeg, it was like through a lens of misery in a way. And, uh, being on the road is it's the most organic way to be a songwriter in the world it's it's very grassroots and it's um it's just so real and it's inspiring and it it, it just the energy it gives me is unparalleled you know it may sound silly uh to say or but the best way to write about experiences is by actually experiencing yeah them, right? <laughs> well yeah you know it's um it's true and there's you can that's what I mean by authenticity. It's like I loved songs about the road long before I lived on the road. They always kind of called me and it was like, well, I think I, it wasn't even a plan to belong to that realm. I just, but I, something was pulling me into it. And now I am that, I am a troubadour. Like there's, it's not a, a hat I wear or a costume. It is the way, it's a way of life. Now, as we're speaking and I, and I am, uh, recognizing that it's a difficult topic to bring up the fact that you uh, were and, mm -hmm. and are still hoping uh, to be getting back on the rails again yeah. soon with Via Rail. And uh, as we're speaking right now, we're within days of, of Jasper uh, being uh, uh, greatly in, uh, impacted yeah. by wildfires. Yeah. But I, I, I feel remiss if I don't bring up the fact that, that you are going to be getting back on yeah. the rails, fingers well, I'm getting on either way. It's just that it won't yeah. take me to Vancouver anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So just tell us about, yeah, I, I guess it's somewhat bittersweet excitement that you're going to be that first performer back on the VFL yeah. Canada train again to perform. But there, there has to be, there has to be something in that though, that is feeding your spark uh, uh, positively though, I would think. It's very surreal. You know, because that was, uh, there was, I feel like my whole sense of time is, has been greatly affected by the pandemic and the isolation period and um, the hiatus I took. That, and so my first time back in Europe was just now. And, you know, I was on this perpetual motion uh, thing for 11 years straight. I did not stop touring for 11 years. And then, boof, like four years with without being on the road. And so my first time back, I was like, am I too old? Am I, have I aged too much? Am I, do I have the energy? Do I have the mental space? Do I, um, and so, and being, I felt like I'd been away for 20 years and being back when I would see friends, I would say like, it's only been five minutes. And so there was this like elongation of time and truncation of time happening at the same time. And I'm very aware that I'm about to step on a train and I know that Orit, I know that woman who sings on the train. Uh, she is a huge part of me, but she is a part of me. I was told I had to say goodbye to Via Rail announced that they are discontinuing that program and not bringing it back. Um, and so I've grieved the loss of that and said goodbye to it. And it coming back, it's like a soap opera where someone comes back to life. Like what? Wait, it's. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm gathering myself for it in a way that's almost um, dreamlike and confused because it it's like, it can't be real, um, can it? And and who is the new Orit and the old Orit that I have to bring to this train? Because when I went and did the shows in Europe, I could feel that there was old Orit and new Orit. And it was a, a, a beautiful thing, I have to say. Like there, there's been growth in the last few years and, and more presence of and more intentionality and more gratitude in a way for having the privilege and, and luxury of getting to do this again 
let alone do it at all. So I'm bringing all of that, the fact that it's, you know, marred by this horrible tragedy in Jasper and elsewhere. I mean, other places are burning down too, but Jasper is such a definitive part of that train journey. Um, it's very indicative of what it's been like to go back out there in general, because the world is not the same. There's this return to normal myth and it's not, it's things have changed. People are different. The world is different. Time has passed. So it's, it's very dream almost like, is it a dream or is it a nightmare? Cause there, there's really, there's both. There's all I can say is I, there's an immensity to my uh, feelings and emotion about it that I don't think I can articulate yet, but I certainly will be, um, journaling about it, writing about it, singing about it. And my role on the train, I feel like, is is certainly not just going to be the entertainer. Like, I feel like almost like the, the, the school teacher who has to sort of guide the other passengers through the grief and the, and the, 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 the crew on the train. Like, there's like this sort of, I'm like an ambassador of emotion. That sounds very, uh, you know egotistical maybe but that's very much what songwriters do in a room so it's I'm certainly um adding songs to the repertoire I've written a song about you know uh fires and and um it's we're in different yeah it's like a marriage of the past and the future and the present so it's it's intense for sure We'll uh, wrap up with this uh, or read again. We've been talking uh, today about a wide variety of things, but the premise was to to touch base on your latest album, Winnipeg. What are you hoping folks that uh, listen to it are going to take away from that experience? Is, is there a message or is there something that you're hoping they're going to pick up on or what, where, where do you land on that? I know that the feedback for many has been that it's been a, a, an important album for them in that it's a, a very emotionally honest um gaze direct gaze at like everything that happened during that period and a, a few people have written to me to say wow this really helped me process uh you know revisit and process and and put how i felt through uh in into words and so i feel like it's been sort of a therapeutic album for a lot of people um and certainly i want them to go like wow she's a great songwriter and musician because uh and i produced it so there's a lot of you know things i'm very proud of musically on it um, as any of my albums, I really want people to listen and and um, feel that they are seen in the songs. It's um, that's my job is to make people feel witnessed in my writing somehow, and then it makes them explore my other work because there's always a back catalog and there's always the next thing coming. So, yeah, I, I really hope people like it.